Welcome back. Before we take a closer look at the internal matters within the European Union, we have to look at the new chapter concerning the transatlantic relations. Now, currently, the focal point might be again the financial crisis.、Uh, we know that the financial, the G20 financial summit, is to be、uh, held very soon in Washington D.C. Chinese President Hu Jintao has left for the D.C. to attend the summit. The thing is,、uh, there are disputes between, for example, Germany and the、uh, Brown Sarkozy plan with regard to how to、uh, bail out the problematic banks. With、uh, uh, the British and French side saying in the same voice that、uh, more should be done to provide subsidies for the flawed banks、mm-hmm. and to cap the salaries of the top-notch business executives and to <coughs> be more regulatory on the financial industry, whilst the Ge- Germans and the Americans would say, "Hey."、Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't quite like the idea of、uh, more interventionism. We should encourage a liberal market economy, liberal democracy. That's why the initial、uh, plan of the Bush administration of using 700 billion U.S. dollars to bail out the Wall Street、mm-hmm. has met very strong opposition from the House.、Mm-hmm. So, what do you think of、uh, the、uh, fundamental differences, not only between the two sides of the Atlantic Ocean? But also between the newly formed axis of、uh, French and,、uh, and the British and、uh, Germans, what, what do you think? Well, I think that、uh, um, you know European construction is a very complex、uh, process. Sometimes it's difficult to understand. But the fact is that we reached a common currency. It took some time, and this is an enormous achievement. I th- say this just to exemplify that although there are、uh, divisions in Uh, at first,、uh, regarding these problems you mentioned,、uh, the truth is that there has been a common position reached、uh, first between the European, then among Europeans in the United States. They have come co- close together. They have、uh, used each other's solutions、uh, in <coughs> some of these problems、uh, regarding the bailouts and responsibility that the, the state is now taking. Uh, regarding the、uh, financial system, so I think a lot has been done. It more has been done than than disagreed. More has been agreed than disagreed, and I think that finally to Washington, Europeans have reached a common position. Although there was an initial discussion, and this is our process. This is our process of、uh, constructing Europe and going forward. Open discussion, transparent discussion. Everybody is listening to it, and finally, there's a compromise and agreement. This is what happened. And in fact, a lot of the critics and observers point out that fundamentally, what the European Union demands is a replacement of the outdated Britain Woods,、mm. uh, which is part of the Yalta framework,、uh, formulated in the immediate aftermath of the Second World War. They say th-、uh, enough is enough for the free willing. Financial innovation on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. They, the Europeans,、uh, say it cl-、uh, loud and clear that we have to step in to intervene. But Washington、uh, has the strong feeling that this might mean an end to the Britain Woods,、mm-hmm. and that would be a termination of their domineering role、uh, within the、uh, outdated international financial framework. What do you think of、uh, the American concern? I mean, you're right. People have been calling for a Bretton Woods II conference, as it were, to to really try and re-debate and redefine some of these rules. I think certainly, obviously, we've got to look at the American concern. They are still the the, the single largest economy in the world、um, as a country. Europe now, as an entity, is a larger economy.、Um, but New York is certainly a key financial centre, but then after New York, really London is is the next key financial centre. So I am certainly confident that the British Prime Minister is not going to be suggesting mechanisms which will undermine what is effectively the driver of the UK economy. And the emerging markets such as India, China, Russia, Brazil, and South Africa demand greater rights、uh, in the major multilateral financial organisations such as the World Bank and IMF.、Uh, what's the European perspective, Theresa? I think European perspective. I mean, I, I'm not speaking for the European Union. European Union. I'm not、mm-hmm. as such. I'm giving my opinion, but I think that the European 
recognize this uh, new role, new countries, new regions playing an important role. The world has changed since Bretton Woods won, and it's only of the interest of the world and also of Europe that uh, mm -hmm. other partners join in in the proportion of their importance and there is a more equitable um, distribution of responsibilities. This is, I think, uh, it, this is the condition for many solutions. Mm -hmm. The Chinese viewers may not want very much uh, President Sarkozy to be the centerpiece of today's interview here brought to them alive, but uh, this uh, French leader uh, is known f uh, for the Europeans as uh, a sleeves rolled up, uh, you know, very active uh, new leader of the European Union. France is the uh, rotating president. But what do you think of uh, the role of a very active and strong leadership within the European Union for not only tackling the financial crisis but also for putting all the 27 member states of the European Union together in a more meaningful way? John? I think it's needed. I think Europe needs strong leadership. Um, if we look at particularly the way in which um, Sarkozy has uh, led Europe towards repairing the relationship with the US, I think this has been an absolutely key and transformational change from the period of four or five years ago when, this, in a sense, the axis of Chirac and Schroeder, I think, really damaged Europe's interest in creating such a gulf with the Americans. Now, I know when I speak to some of my Chinese friends here, they worry about Europe getting too close to America. But we have to be honest, America is still by far Europe's biggest economic and political strategic interest and whether or not we have the same policies as, as the US what we certainly need to have is a relationship where we and the US trust each other and we can talk to each other and in that respect I give President Sarkozy actually quite a great deal of credit for rebuilding that relationship. After hosting two summit meetings as the rotating president of the European Union he called for yet another emergency summit meeting to look at the, uh, uh, the, the confrontation in Georgia and after that uh, he uh, urged President Bush to host uh, a, a G20 financial summit in Washington so he loves the idea of having summit meetings so to speak. Um, but then uh, he, he says, he complained, President Sarkozy complained that uh, uh, half a year of a rota rotating presidency is not enough for a man like him to assume uh, the proactive leadership within the framework of the European Union. What do you think of the idea of having a permanent president for the European Commission? I think uh, indeed this presidency has been a very positive one for the reasons John gave and others. Uh, even in the Georgia conflict, I think it was a very active and uh, positive one. But uh, regarding your question, um, you know, uh, we have been for many years having rotating presidencies. This has been very important for the building of a more cooperative and more integrated feeling of uh, European feeling among all countries. And the idea that all states are equal in this union is a very important one and this was a very important exercise to give all countries and peoples in this country the feeling that everyone, every country has uh, the same uh, importance. And so this was a, important for the building of Europeanship, if mm -hmm. I so say. Now we have reached another stage and this is why in the Lisbon Treaty we proposed that there should be a uh, constant president for a longer period of time. So now you know that the Lisbon Treaty is uh, uh, on a standby because one of the members, not the largest member, but a very one of the medium members, their people said no, we're not ready for that. So we have to wait. And this is how it works. Uh, this is really the um, equality of uh, rights between member states and this is how they agreed to proceed and this is how we shall proceed hoping that maybe in the next future the treaty might be uh, finally adopted and we will have one long, longer Thank period. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for being with us. With that we come to the end of this edition of Dialogue brought to you live from Beijing. I'm Yang Rei. Goodbye.